Happy March! <laughs> I can't believe it's March already, but I also feel like I say that every month in every chatty vlog. Um, I guess it's just a sign of <laughs> getting older, I suppose, that I just feel like, I don't know, the time just, the time just seems to go. Um, but yeah, all good, all good. I hope you had a lovely February. Um, I have had a lovely February. Um, I had my parents over for a week, which was lovely. And I had a week off and just kind of spent time with them and relaxed and enjoyed their company and that. And it was, it was really lovely. I haven't seen them for eight months. We FaceTime and we send messages backwards and forwards, but actual physical contact, it's been eight months. And I've really been missing them. We had a really, really rubbish time at the end of last year, a really stressful time and stuff. And, it, and so like in October and it was just, my parents tried to come over then, but then like the flights were really expensive. So it's just been so long. So it was so nice just to kind of spend some time with them and actually have a mummy hug, which was, which was lovely. Um, and then it was my birthday. Um, I am now the ripe old age of 38. Um, and yeah, like that was good. It's all good. And uh, you see these things here? These are my birthday presents. And I thought I would do a what I got for my birthday kind of video with you guys because I feel like I I feel like I'm changing and evolving as a person. I should have redone my hair, it's all falling out. Um, and I, I thought I would just kind of like discuss a bit with you because I feel like, I feel like I'm changing. I don't know whether that's because, I, because I'm getting older or because my, my tastes are changing and my interests are changing or because I'm finding my true self. I very much feel over like, I very much feel that the past six months, I would say, I feel like I have very much been on a journey and on a pathway to finding my true self about who I really am and what I'm into. And a lot of that has been about just accepting who I am as a person and thinking like, <laughs> screw it, <laughs> to everything else. And like, I'm one of these people who, I'm a bit of a people pleaser, like, I like to make people happy and please people and I get a little bit of anxiety around that if people aren't happy like it's just a personality flaw and like if people unsubscribe from the box or from patreon I'm like what have I done what have I done wrong like <laughs> um so that's just a personality thing of mine I'm very aware of it it's not a good thing um but over the last few months I've been saying a little bit more like sod it do you know what I mean sod it I'm just gonna be who I am and I'm gonna explore that and run with it more and part of that has been you know p picking up a bit more of like a spiritual practice um and yeah just kind of like running with it and exploring with it and by that I mean being like more attune and aware of nature and the earth and the world around us and just allowing myself more time in nature um like i love that um that quote that sort of does the rounds down there that like um everybody it says something like everybody should spend 20 minutes in nature unless they're really busy in which case they should spend an hour and I like that and that's really true and um as you guys know we now since October last year we um homeschool our daughter and she is a very outdoorsy person she loves being outdoors which is great because I love being outdoors and I knew that I loved being outdoors like I love camping and going on our adventures and things but it took spending more time in nature 
for me to realise how much I do love nature and how much it um, influences like my mental health and how good I'm feeling and all of those kind of things. And so with getting outside more, we've been doing like more forest school kind of things. And I guess I've been exploring more of like the nature side of life and that is starting to very much influence my um, interests in terms of art and craft and hobbies and things. Um, and I was very fortunate with my birthday that my friends and family loved me and they bought me some wonderful presents. And so I thought I would share them with you because I know that some of you um, are into the same sort of things as me. Um, so basically being more aware of nature and things and I've shared these um, I back when we started like the homeschool journey I started following quite a few people on Instagram about homeschool and stuff and um, I then decided to start my own personal Instagram it's something that I had been toying with for a while um, because I do I really enjoy one of my passions like hobbies wise is photography um, I used to be a photographer I did retrain I went to college and I did photography and I did portrait photography and I kind of stopped doing that because um, it meant it was a lot of weekend work and at the time like John was working full-time during the week and then I was working like all weekend and then we just all like didn't really see each other um, and you know financially we were at a good point and so I gave that up and um, yeah that was that <laughs> and um, I really do enjoy taking photos I find photos a fantastic creative outlet for me I um, I have a very expensive Canon SLR I have the 5D Mark II it was like the latest one in its day it is currently broken and um, I haven't used it for a, a few years now and um, I have just been using my iPhone which is what I'm on now and I really enjoy kind of like pushing myself um, and seeing what I can take with my iPhone and then editing it on um, my iPhone as well so it's all iPhone based and um, yeah it brings me a lot of joy I really enjoy photography and um, like we are memory keepers most of us so it kind of enjoying photography is kind of um, brings us into our journals and our scrapbooking and our project life and all that kind of stuff. So my project life album, I mainly have um, as like people photos. I put the odd bit of like landscape and things in because I am really into um, like social history photography. Um, by that I mean like things that people used to take when they um, had like run out of about you know they got one or two shots left on their roll of film you know they would they would take some photos of their street or the high street in town that kind of stuff not really thinking anything of it but I absolutely love those photos when you look back on them like years and years later um like I've got some of like the, the town near where I live of the high street in the 80s and oh my gosh has that changed like you know Woolworths isn't there anymore and all of these kind of things so um I like the social photography like really interests me so I do try and kind of incorporate the odd thing like that into my project life album and um I also, whenever we go on holiday, um, I also like to try and take a photo of the car that we're in because I think cars are very good at um, dating things and I think it's really interesting to see how things like cars have changed. So I always take a photo of like the tent with the car next to it or our camper van at the campsite, all those kind of things because I think it's just really interesting over the years to see how things have changed and um my parents like i always remember they've got this they've got this beautiful photo album that i sort of saw you know before they'd moved um and um it's got these absolutely beautiful like black and white photos in it absolutely gorgeous i love black and white photography um and there's like photos of their campsite with their car you know like mum stood next to the car um 
and stuff. And I love that. I absolutely love that. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that car they used to drive. Love that kind of thing. So I'm kind of conscious of that, that um, I want these photos to look back on as well. But the Project Life album, as I said, is mainly people and, and sort of things like that. Um, but I really enjoy taking other photos. I enjoy taking like pictures of nature and all that kind of stuff. And I like kind of documenting things that we've been up to. I like to kind of use that as um, like a way of being kind of like a accountable um, of, uh, of what we've done and sort of looking back and thinking, wow, we've done all these things. Um, and so, yeah, I set up my personal Instagram account, The Whimsical Cloud, and I've been really enjoying that photographic journey. And I also feel like, you know, this um, being happy and uh, like mental health kind of things really interest me and I find those fascinating as well. And I do like, I do very much think that we are responsible for like, making and creating our own happiness. And, you know, I think we can wake up in the morning and decide whether or not to be happy, <laughs> um, that kind of thing. And I kind of use that kind of philosophy with my photography and my Instagram account. And so I kind of like, I like to try and find something in every day that I can take a photograph of. Um, doesn't matter what it is particularly, I just try and think of something that's photograph worthy. And some days, if there isn't anything photograph worthy, I kind of try and make something photograph worthy. You know, if we're having a sort of like a near day or whatever, I kind of think, right, okay, what can we do? And I'll and I'll bake or we will go out in the garden and look for flowers or things like that. I'm gonna have some tea. This mug is really old, but do you know what? It just feels, one of those mugs that just like feels so good in your hand. Mm. Oh. And yeah, it's lovely. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying like my photography again. Um, I decided to open up a separate Instagram account because I didn't think it would sit well with um, the Mrs. Brimble's one, so hence the new new one. And I'm really enjoying where that's where I'm going with that. And all of this is relevant in a minute. So I'm trying to stay this way because there's a pile of stuff that I've strategically placed behind my head so that you can't see it. It's like random stuff on John's bedside table. Mm. So yeah, I am finding myself more and more in tune with nature and I'm really enjoying that path that I'm going on and I'm enjoying taking my nature photos and exploring all that. And as a result of, of that, um, I've started a nature journal. Um, I say started and I'm not gonna show you it yet because there's only a few pages in there and I'm still like finding my feet and exploring that and where I want to go. I am very much enjoying following the hashtag nature journal and <laughs> nature explorer and nature journal with children and all those kind of ones because I very much am enjoying looking at other people's journals. I love looking at other people's journals anyway and actually that is kind of a hobby of mine is looking at other people's journals like I love journal flip throughs. Mm. You know I probably spend more time looking at other people's journals than I spend in my own journal but I'm okay with that as I've discussed before I work and I'm a mum and I homeschool and I do other creative things and to me looking at other people's journals is a creative outlet so I'm totally okay with that and I enjoy it and I think if you enjoy it then that's a good thing you know tea mm. so down the line I will share my nature journal with you um but yeah, it's it, as I said, I don't know whether it's an aging thing, like my tastes are changing because I'm an, uh, I'm getting older, or because um, I'm becoming more in tune with nature and the world of, around me and that kind of stuff. But the world around me is very much influencing my art and my hobbies and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that was kind of like why I started the Nature Journal, um, and I. I'm doing a bit of a mix in there. We did some pressed flowers 
Um, so I've got some pressed flowers in my journal and I've got some drawings in my journal and um, I want to put some photographs in my journal because I've been doing a few flat lays of nature collections and I want to put those in my nature journal as well but I've run out of paper for my Canon selfie and I can't afford to buy any more at the moment so there we go so as soon as as soon as I've got money again to be able to afford to buy some paper from my from a printer I will do that and I will put them those print those photos out and put them in my journal and kind of like document um like oh my bra I don't you hate that when your bra strap falls down I hate that um and so yeah I will document like our nature collections and things in my journal so I will show you my nature journal um I will show you that but it will be sometime on when I feel like I've when I feel like I found oh it's going again oh, when I feel like I've found my feet with it and I've and I've got something to show you then I will show you so yeah I know um and that'll probably be a set probably be a separate video I may even put it on YouTube for the wider the wider audience I don't know we'll see we'll see how um that all pans out and things so yeah when when I put in the group about um March video requests and content requests like Heather's wanted to know more about my nature journal um and stuff so yeah I feel like that might be another video um but yeah I'm really ex enjoying exploring a new area of my life kind of our journey to zero waste a more sustainable eco way we're homeschooling we're getting in tune with the nature all that kind of stuff I've even let my armpit air grow um <laughs> too much information i don't know just, just you know whatever keeping it real um yeah it's it's just all kind of influencing and um jane said that like a uh, video requests like flowers and i was like oh i don't do flowers and then i stopped and thought about it and thought i do do flowers now when i say i don't do flowers in as much as they're in like the planner community i don't know if you've noticed but there's like, quite a lot of like fashion-y they call them like fashion girls kind of kits and stickers and things and I, I i i i don't really like them i don't really like them but i find that i'm not really like i'm a bit of a a bit of a contradiction because i don't really like the like the chintziness of them or, or and so i don't really like I don't really like uh, chintzy. I kind of do like chintzy, but I don't like chintzy. It all depends on how it's done. I like, I like a vintagey, retro kind of thing. Like, it it depends on what it's on and what how it's done. Like, I have a love hate relationship with Kath Kidston, for example. I love some of it, and I also hate some of it because some of it's too chintzy and bleh and twee and ugh. And other stuff I really like, so it all kind of depends. But I really love like retro kind of flowery kind of thing. But um, I don't like a lot of the flowery things that you see, um, you know, particularly in, like the planner things. So I was like, no, I don't like, I don't like flowers. But then I was like, well, actually, I do like flowers, and you know, like I like having flowers in my home don't always have them very often because of hay fever but like I love this time of year having um daffodils in my house I absolutely love daffodils in the house um so I do like flowers in terms of like but I'm more into I want visually I enjoy and from an art point of view I want to get into flowers but that are more of like a bio um biological drawing like a is that what they call them? Like biological drawing? Like more like um science diagram? Do you do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. If you look, if you look at if you either look on Pinterest or say on Instagram, look at the hashtag nature journal, you'll know what I mean. They're kind of like a more of a biological bio. What's the word? <laughs> I don't know what the word is hopefully you understand what I mean so 
I guess I what I'm saying is I am kind of getting into flowers in that sense of the word like I like how they're drawn in like a nature journal kind of way I'm confusing I know mm. but in the same way like I don't like pink but I also love pink I love hot pink and pastel pink which is the right pastel pink used in the right way so I'm quite I'm quite funny I'm quite funny really um like I I'm not girly girly but then I am it's it's all like it's quite difficult for people to buy me stuff I guess or like things like that because I kind of sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't it's got to be done in the right way so a bit of a contradiction, but I'm still very much into my whimsical characters. I still very much love drawing my whimsical characters. And I I feel more adventurous now I, with, my, with my illustrations. I feel like I can take them further and go even more whimsical, like have like long spindly legs or long arms or, or stuff. I feel like my style has kind of, evolved and continues to evolve um and i guess i'm not afraid of experimentation now <laughs> Woo! um not in a like a rock and roll kind of sense but in terms of like my illustration i feel like i can um so like, this top's really old really really old and i found it recently you know doing the whole like sorting stuff out and it's like i don't know i don't know i feel fidgety now um yeah, so I feel like I'm still really into my whimsical characters and my vibrant colours and I'm still hugely into 80s music and inspired by like the 80s and childhood stuff like Trolls and Rainbow Bright and all that kind of stuff. So that part of me has not changed. I'm still really into that. But the part of me that has changed has been like drawing more of an influence from nature and the world around me. So shall I show you my presents? Because I got some pretty awesome presents. I keep falling off into bed. Oh, cover that stuff up. Ready, hang on, hang on, I'm gonna move. Cover that stuff. Okay, so, um, I'm just gonna like delve into the bag um, and just show you as they come out in no particular order. I'm showing you everything because I know a lot of you are kind of into the same sort of stuff as I am. Um, so maybe it will be of interest to you. <laughs> um, this is a book called A Gossip from the Forest uh, by Sarah, Sarah Mait Maitland. And John found this through Geraldine. You guys probably know her, Geraldine Davison. She's Geraldine Jane on Instagram. He follows her account and she had this book on there. And he thought that I might be into it. And I am. Um, I'll read you. In this exquisite groundbreaking book, Maitland journeys through forests in different seasons, illuminating the mysterious secrets and silences, gifts and perils of our most ancient landscapes, and untangling the forest's role as the source of one of our earliest and most vital cultural forms, the fairy tale. So that's, I, I, I've read like a couple of pages, um, and I, I'm enjoying it so far, and yeah really like really can't wait to finish it i'm i kind of i <laughs> i'm juggling because i'm also reading the binding which is our march book club read so if you if you want to join in with that get yourself a copy of the binding and um yeah start reading along and discussing with us that'll be really awesome that looks like it's gonna be a really good book i've read a bit of it already um so yeah, that looks like it's going to be a really, really good read. Um, so I'm kind of like, I want to read this, but I also want to read The Binding. And also I need to read The Binding because I kind of feel like I need to read it at least early, if not ahead of you guys a bit, so that I can start writing some prompts for our discussion and all that kind of stuff. So once The the Binding has been done, I shall look forward to reading reading this book. Okay, so... 
eek. Um, I'm also really, really, really into um, bushcraft videos. I really, really enjoy watching bushcraft videos. I find them, like, John and I don't really watch that much telly. Um, we're not really, like, telly people or kind of, like, mainstream telly people. We're just, just not into it. But we do enjoy sitting down together and watching a bit of YouTube. And one of the things that we enjoy watching together are bushcraft videos. Find them really relaxing. And, um, yeah, I just have been really into some of the things that they've done in those bushcraft videos. And, obviously, John and I go camping and go on like our adventures and stuff as well and um so i've been kind of like really into whittling whittling i really want to get in, i really want to whittle some spoons and bowls and things and um i got a whittling knife don't worry it's got a cap on the end um yeah got a whittling knife uh, there's a bit of a beginner's knife i'm not I'm like, I don't want to sound ungrateful because I'm not, but it's a bit of a beginner's knife, um, which is good to get me started. But I feel like I may need to um, progress at some point into another knife. But it feels, it's a really good knife. It feels lovely in the hand. Um, I, I I've probably ta I talked about it in a studio vlog, so you may or may not have seen it, but I am currently working on a... Um, on a new course um, from time to time I do online courses and um, I'm working on an, on, on and I am working on an online course at the moment hopefully it'll be released sometime in the spring maybe towards the end of spring um, it does feature sticks in it already but I'm wondering whether I can kind of like work on that a bit more experience uh, practice some more whittling and include that in the course I don't know we'll see but um, I am going to make some of those art videos available to you guys on Patreon too. So watch out for some of those. Um, yes, don't worry. They won't all be like that. There will be painting and drawing as well. So don't worry. Okay, so this is like my kind of main present, I guess. Like John bought me this. I have been really into... <laughs> Um, along with whittling and woodwork, I've been really into looking at pyro py pyrography. Um, and yeah, John bought me a pyrography kit. It came with some coloured pencils. I'm not really sure why. but um, And there's like some stencils and things in there as well. Um, but yeah, so a pyrography kit. And um, I really want to, in our van, in our camper van, the walls um the walls are wooden and in my head for a long time now and um, which I'm, like john's probably sick of hearing me talk about this um for a long time now i've had this vision of drawing pyrographing a um mandala onto the wall of the van um not not a complete mandala either but probably like half or three quarters of it um so I'm going to practice, I'm going to practice and see how we go. I may or may not video it, I'm not sure, we'll see. Um, but that could be interesting. Now, talking of interesting, John's mum bought me this. Um, and it's, it's kind of like she did not know that I was getting a pyrography tool. Um, but she bought me some like little, it comes in, some little wooden discs with holes in them. So that's pretty cool. So I've got some things I can play around with and um, some little practice piece. But John's also going to like, he's got some bits that were out of the van when we bought it. Because it was a panel van and we converted it into a, we converted it ourselves into a camper van. I say we, it was mainly John. <laughs> In fact, it was all John. <laughs> um, so he's got some wood that I can practice on as well. So... I'm quite, I'm really excited to kind of like explore a different craft, a different hobby. When I'll get time to do these things, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe when the, when the summer rolls around and we're out on a, outdoors a bit more, that's probably when I'll be able to do the whittling um, and stuff. So I'll show you this. It's not, this isn't a, um, this isn't an arty craft thing, but I do know a lot of you are Harry Potter fans. So I thought I'd show you this. 
brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It says, if you don't get my Harry Potter references, then there is something seriously wrong with you. Oh yes, oh yes, I love this. Um, I I wanted to, to like use my stuff and I've been holding off because I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> um, almond and coconut butter with chocolate orange. Mm. Um, <laughs> I've got another book. This one. It is called The Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd. It's it's disappears because look, it's foiled. Nan Shepherd, The Living Mountain. And it says, it's only a, it's only a thin little book, this one. Um, in this masterpiece of nature writing, Nan Shepherd describes her journeys into the Cairngorm Mountains of Scotland. There she encounters a world that can be breathtakingly beautiful at times and shockingly harsh at others. Her intense poetic prose explores and records the rocks, rivers, creatures and hidden aspects of this remarkable landscape. Shepherd spent a lifetime in search of the essential nature of the Cairngorms. Her quest led her to write this classic meditation on the magnific magnificence of mountains and on our imaginative relationship with the wild world around us. Composed during the Second World War, the manuscript of The Living Mountain lay untouched for more than 30 years before it was finally published. So I thought that sounded really interesting and I added it to my wish list and I was bought it, which is amazing. Um, we are actually going to, the, going to go to the Cairngorms this year um, because we're going to go to Scotland, going to the Scotland Planner Meet in June and then we're going to go off to the Cairngorms. So I thought this would be an interesting, interesting read. But I was also intrigued and interested by the fact that she kind of like took the natural world around her and documented it and wrote it all down. I, I have previously mentioned that I, I think that um, I'm writing a book. I, I did write a children's book and I was going to illustrate it and try and get publishers to publish it. The illustrating thing has totally fallen by the wayside. I haven't been able to um, carve out the time to an energy <laughs> uh, to be able to do that. So that is parked. But um, I've been writing a book about um, my journey. Everything I've basically talked about at the beginning of this video about my changing and my getting more into nature and how things around me are changing and getting you know becoming more in depth in nature i've been writing a book but it's in a diary style so it's not so bad it's not it's quite easy to do because it's like a like like di it's basically like diary entries you know like adrian mole kind of thing <laughs> um like diary entries but about like my life and the bringing the nature into my life more um so i'm really interested by stuff like this because um it's sort of like a similar vein, I guess, in documenting nature. And I just find like, you know, we are journalists, we are life documenters. So I just find all that kind of stuff like really fascinating. Like what people choose to record out of their daily lives, what they what they perceive that people would like to know about, that kind of stuff. Fascinates me. Fascinates me. Absolutely. Um, da -dum 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 -dum. Another book. This is a beautiful book. The Wild Remedy. It's The Wild Remedy by Emma Mitchell and it's How Nature Mends Us, A Diary. Now I was recommended this by um, a lady I follow on Instagram called A Little Hello. Um, she actually runs a homeschool group that we attend sometimes and um, she very much, she um, was taking photos of nature collections so things that they find on their walks in nature she was just doing a flat lay of them and taking a photo of them and I was so inspired by those like we do collect treasures on our walks on our woodland walks on our beach walks and all those things we do collect treasures things that have fallen on the floor we do collect treasures and we bring them home and they normally go on like our, what I call a nature table but it's really a shelf um they go on there um and we were just like coming home and like plonking them straight on there but i she, i was really inspired by her photos to actually take a photo of them before they go on the nature table do like a nice flat lay um <clears throat> and those uh, as what i was talking about that i will be putting into my nature journal but she said that she was inspired 
buy this book. So on the wish list it went and I was very kindly bought it. Um, it is, um, the lady who wrote it is, um, is from Cambridgeshire. So that's um, really good as well. And it's full of the most beautiful um, illustrations. Like, oh, that was the word I was looking for, botanical, botanical in illustrations. So it's got some really beautiful botanical in illustrations. But if I try, I'm trying to find it now, but it's got like beautiful, like photography of various different flat lays. And as I said, like she was the one who was doing, um, here we go, doing like nature collection photography. So yeah, this is gonna be an awesome one. I'll read, I'll read the cover for you so you can see. Um, so it says, Emma Mitchell has suffered with depression or as she calls it, the gray slug for 25 years. In 2003, she moved from the city to the edge of the Cambridgeshire Fens and began to take walks in the countryside around her home, photographing, collecting and drawing as she went. Each walk lifted her mood, proving to be as medicinal as any therapy or pharmaceutical. In Emma's hand-illustrated diary, she takes us with her as she follows the paths and trails around her home and further afield, sharing her nature finds and tracking the lives of local flora and fauna over the course of a year. Reflecting on how these encounters impact her mood, Emma's unfailingly honest and affecting account of her own struggles with mental health is a powerful testament to how reconnecting with nature may offer us all some answers. While charting her own seasonal highs and some devastating lows, she also looks to the science behind these changes, calling on new research into the ways in which our bodies and minds respond to plants and wildlife when we venture outdoors. Written with Emma's characteristic wit and frankness and filled with her beautiful drawings, paintings and photography, this is a truly unique book for anyone who has ever felt the draw of nature and wondered about, wondered about its influence over us. Sounds amazing, right? So I can't wait to get into that book too. Um, I've got another book. Uh, John got me this one to go with my pottery tool the learn to burn <laughs> i love that learn to burn so it's just basically guides you through how to use the pyrography tool um and then have like various different projects and things you can do now the projects if i'm perfectly honest don't really appeal to me i find them a little bit old-fashioned but the techniques will be i like this one i love that look at that look at those christmas tags um so yeah the the like most of the projects I'm a bit like no but um yeah they've got things like different different techniques and things so that will be good to, and interesting um I think that was pretty much birthday cards birthday cards oh I got some Dymo labels for my Dymo label maker these ones are clear you probably can't see them very well they doesn't have a box to show you either but they are clear tape that you, when you punch your letters, the letters come out white. So that is pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Not sure how I feel about all the plastic though. Not good. Dropped my present to this. The present that I dropped is the very last thing. It's not really art and craft related, but I thought I'd show you anyway, cause it's cute. My friend got me this little um, eight pound <laughs> from Next. <laughs> um, it's it's artificial, but it's so pretty that it's just so gorgeous. And I'm having a dilemma at the moment because I'm about to pray, change to my spring decor from my winter decor, and um, he's autumn. So I'm like, do I put him away for, until the autumn? Do I keep him out? Oh, I don't know. I'll find I'll find the answer to it. Um, but he's super cute, yo. I love him. So yeah, that's everything that I got for my birthday. So I was super blessed to have those wonderful items. And they, as I said, they are very much, um, yeah, very much in keeping with like where I'm at at the moment. What's, um, each year, um, what's influencing me and where I'm drawing like my inspiration from. So I feel very super inspired by all of those things and I can't wait to read them and use them and just like explore this new journey, you know? 
Um, I've also been on a massive like looking at books and things. I've seen some really beautiful um, books on nature journaling and how, how to nature journal and all those kind of things. Now I will leave you the link to my wish list so that you, not so, not for you to buy stuff from it, but um, if you um, are kind of like going the same sort of way as me and you're inspired by those things, then you might like to have a look at some of the books that I've got on my wish list. You know, um, rather than me like listing them out, you can actually have a look on them, look at them on Amazon, and then you can see like the um, synopsis and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, so. I've got some really nice books there on like nature journaling and stuff. Um, yeah, so I guess that's kind of it for this month. Um, and yeah, <laughs> looking forward to reading the binding. Um, I did put the post obviously out about March content requests. Um, but if there's anything you anything you'd like to see, um, please please, 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 like, let me know, and I'll try and incorporate those, either collage sheets or videos, like, as I said, I do Patreon for you guys, and I want to make you happy, so if there's anything you'd like to see, then let me know, Easter-y type related things will be, um, April though, because Easter is at the end of, mid, mid end April, um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys. Thank you for joining me on another month of Patreon. Um, I'm excited to see what things come about and all that kind of stuff. So much love to you guys. Bye.